Hello, foodie beauties. <laughs> hey guys, hey guys, hey guys, hey. <laughs> so today I have a feast of a meal here. We have um, Jolly Bee. I have some paper here with some utensils. So I have uh, Jolly Bee. I haven't had Jolly Bee in a long time. I did a road trip once and ate Jolly Bee. Uh, there's a lot of Jolly Bees here and I'm gonna give it another try. The chicken is really good, but we're gonna try the rice, potatoes, and I'm gonna have another go at the spaghetti. And we're gonna talk about a creepy Kuwaiti gin story. But let me set up a thumbnail. I need your help with this. So just give me, be patient, okay? So I, this was a nine piece and Salah came and um, took his share, which he eats more chicken than me. Some things I eat more than him, but some think he, things he eats more than me. So, I have a huge gravy, and there's small gravies that came with it, so we're gonna make a mega gravy. Yes, I want a mega gravy. Okay, let's try this. So while I'm setting this up, because when I'm eating, I know you guys don't like what I'm talking, I'll start talking about the story. Basically, um, somebody brought this to my attention, a viewer, and I looked more into it, so thank you for, I have the garbage here. <laughs> Whoever suggested that, one of the keys to doing mukbangs and not stressing yourself out is keeping things tidy. So I do try to do that um, as much as possible. <laughs> so anyway, thank you for suggesting that. So I looked more into it and there's actually a lot of stories about it. Um, this singer, this Kuwaiti folk singer, very popular in the Gulf countries. Uh, had a very, very successful career as a musician here in the Gulf countries, and uh, especially Kuwait. And her name was Nora, I think, Takakaka? Taka <laughs> I'm not too sure how to pronounce that. I'm really bad, so I apologize. But we'll call her Nora. So we have some Coke. Okay. And... So this singer apparently went to um, a wedding, got invited to sing at a wedding. Um, and it was a wedding of gins, apparently. So it was like a non-human wedding, okay? Now gins are like, in the Arabic world, they don't believe in like ghosts, but they believe in gins, which are spirits, lower form spirits, lower than angels, and they're made from fire they're born from fire okay and there's some terrifying stories about jinns that i've heard so i will share some of them with you but this one is about the gin wedding so this is like rice it comes in like a little hamburger package <laughs> so we're gonna try the rice with like the gravy i guess i don't know <laughs> yeah let's try it with the gravy but let's um spoon some of the gravy on it so that I'm trying to set up a good thumbnail just give me bear with me so anyway and I'll pour some gravy on the potatoes I have some mashed potatoes spaghetti spicy chicken joy and some rice let me lift up my appliance <laughs> So this Nora and her band get invited to play. Um, she was well known for her beautiful voice, by the way. So this was in 1997. They get invited to play at this wedding. And when she got the call for the wedding, it was like the same day and she was busy. So she's like, I can't, I can't, I'm busy, you know? Okay, let me just see here. Let's let's do a, a thumbnail. You guys will see what it looks like. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna get this big bucket out of the way. <laughs> this cute little this cute little um thing here. So anyways, yeah, let's start. I'm so hungry. Salah brought me some coleslaw. <laughs> Alright, so Bismillah. And let's talk about this spooky story and try some of the food here. 
Beauty Bite. Mmm. I love their gravy. Potatoes are creamy and fresh. Mmm. I, I love rice. I'm so hungry. The rice is yummy. It's just steamed rice, but the gravy is really like, it's a salty sauce, right? Mmm. So, the spaghetti. So, this has like little hot dogs in it and like a sweet tomato sauce with cheese. Let's see about it. If I like it more now. I found it too sweet before, but let's see if I like it now. Mmm. That's so good. I do love it. Mmm. That is so good. All right, so this singer gets invited to the wedding and she's like, I'm busy, you know, but the person insisted and just like any person would do, they love their fans, like any performer would do. And like a good performer, you know, she was a really good performer and really cared about her fans, it seems, you know, and the person insisted, like, I must have you for my daughter's wedding. Um, I must have you for my daughter's wedding was the mother of the bride who called her. I'm horrible at storytelling, sorry. <laughs> but um, she's like, I must have you at my daughter's wedding. She's a huge fan. And the and Nora was like, okay, I'll make an exception. You know, we'll go. So she got her band together. And they all... went to the location when they got there they noticed that these people must be very wealthy because like the wealth everything was like super it was a huge estate three floor estate and there were more people there than she had ever seen at any venue when she got there they were giving uh, given a dressing room a room to prepare and she was greeted by these women um, who, who shook her hand and she and another band member did note the same thing that whenever they shook the hands of these people they were their skin had a weird texture and it was like their hands were not soft and warm like human flesh. I love the gravy on the rice. So, and it's also custom in Arabic culture to kiss the cheeks when you're greeting someone when she was greeting the women. Um, oh, that's spicy. Beauty bite. Mmm. I'm gonna dip the whole thing in gravy. Mm. That's spicy and delicious.
Again, the women were mostly dressed in black and had pale faces. Kind of like me. I'm not a gin. Oh. She noticed their skin was a different texture. And also wanted to note Nora also did report that on her way to the venue, she felt uneasy and like she was regretting, she was regretting her decision. Mm. Their fried chicken's legit. Jolly Bee's yummy. Mmm. So they're at the venue. And she goes to perform. She leaves the dressing room. And this is the first time she's seeing the bride and groom. And she thought they looked very bizarre. Not traditional, not custom for like a wedding. Like, the groom was dressed in like old fashioned. clothing not something you would see modernly at weddings like how a groom would dress and the bride was wearing a black dress with white dots and diamonds and jewels so they were clearly clearly very affluent people never have too much gravy mm. I love the potatoes so so Nora also noticed that there they were expressionless they were like statues or mannequins. They didn't move, they didn't smile, nothing. So after a while, she found herself getting oddly tired and worn out and a bit dizzy after playing for a bit for the strange couple. So she decided to, um, you know, her dressing room area was noisy down on the first floor. So she decided to try the second floor. to see if there was a quieter space for her to, to rest. The second floor was eerie and creepy. It was like abandoned looking. All the rooms on the second floor, there was a bunch of rooms. All of the rooms were um, closed except for one. So Nora entered the one room. It had one bed with like a worn out mattress and it was all dusty in there. So she laid down and she fell asleep. And while she was sleeping, she had a nightmare, apparently about a woman 
in an all black dress chasing her. And when she woke up, she found that the bedroom door was closed, even though she knew she had left it open before going to sleep. Well, she found that the door was closed and she couldn't open it. So, after a while of trying and trying, the door finally opened and she was surprised and horrified to see the woman she had dreamt of or the figure but it was apparently a figure with like not no features but was like in a black black attire she saw that it was standing at the door so you know her terrified thinking maybe she's still dreaming she closed her eyes it's just a dream, it's just a dream. She opened her eyes and the woman was gone. But looking down the hall, she saw a young boy standing there and laughing. She heard the laughter. And the boy headed towards the third floor. So confused, she decided to follow the young boy up to the third floor. And just like the second floor, the third floor had rooms, but only one was open. The boy went into the room and the door closed behind him. So at this point, Nora decided to go back down to the first floor and maybe notify people what was going on. There's a boy in the room. But when she went to turn to leave, something grabbed her leg, preventing her from going away. And a voice was saying, please, Nora, please sing, sing, sing. Like the voice was getting more insistent. Finally, it released her. And she went back down to the first floor. And the band was frantic. Where are you, you know? Like, something's creepy going on here. We went to look for you, and, we, and, and they basically, when they went to look for her, they noticed how creepy the second floor was. And they also saw and heard things similar to what Nora had. <clears throat> so at this point around them they noticed people celebrating and they caught a glimpse of the legs and they were like hooved creatures with like hairy bodies, like like goat men, like what is believed in jinn mythology. So at this point they were like, yeah, I'm out of here, rightfully so. And they fleed. And that, after that, they actually retired from mu music. So something must have really frightened them off. Um, so messy something must have frightened them off now I think I read that Nora sadly passed away in 2016 rest in may she rest in peace but she was asked so many times to do interviews. And she always refused to even interview. And that's where I tend to be, you know, tend to believe 
the stories more because if she was just doing it for clout um she would be doing interviews but it's rumored that she did do after some really you know intense <laughs> asking or begging of her to do it that she did do an interview now apparently the interview cannot be found I wasn't able to find anything And the interviewer shortly died after that interview. Which is pretty creepy if that's true. Like, you wanted the interview so bad, be careful what you wish for, you know? <sighs> this food is phenomenal. I don't remember it being, like, I love it. It's very meaty compared to how I remember it. When I tried it in Toronto. Yum. Last piece. <sighs> Crispy with gravy. Mm. You guys know I love gravy. <sighs> So that's the story. Oh yeah, I forgot to add. Whenever she did mention it to somebody, close to her, about where she had gone, the location they said that that had place had been abandoned for some time making the experience all that more mysterious right The chicken is so good. Would I say better than KFC? It's pretty on par with that. Maybe slightly better. <laughs> Depends how they cook it. If it's fresh, you know. When I say fast food is fresh, what I mean is freshly prepared. Like, I've had fast food that's nasty, where it's like, sit, you can tell it's been sitting under the lamps for gosh no how, how long. Most of the, when I say it's fresh, it's like made to order. <laughs> I don't mean that it's fresh, colorful produce. Mm. 
very, very delicious. I hope Salah enjoyed his. He's eating in another room with Howie in his gaming room. <laughs> He'll do mukbangs with me sometimes. We might get a huge table for the other room and set it up so I can like cook on it with you guys, like make, you know, make things. Um, and then he can do mukbangs with me as well because right now this is like a very small table. <laughs> Anyway, I'm gonna go wash my hands and clean up here. And I love these plastic things, makes for easy cleanup. But yeah, I'm using a laptop box, whatever. <laughs> I need a better setup. But anything, whatever works, you know? Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Ooh, spicy, spicy. <laughs> and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.